Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to analyze and design weld groups within RAM Connection Standalone. Now this workflow will consist of several parts, including specifying your design configuration, entering your weld group information, reviewing the results, and then finally performing an optimization. We will now turn our attention to our RAM Connection Standalone application. The first step in designing either bolt groups or weld groups is to specify your design configuration. To do that, you're going to go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Design Code icon. Both bolt groups and weld groups will use the design code and the maximum strength ratio limit that is specified within this dialog in their design. Here you can see that I've specified the AISC 16 LRFD design standard and I've entered a maximum strength ratio limit of 1.0. I will confirm this information and then click OK before starting my weld group. Now at this point I'm ready to enter my weld group information. So I'm going to go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on my weld group icon. This will bring me directly to the connection pad for entering a weld group. So the first step in my workflow is to enter my loading information. Now, as you may recall, I did enter the design code as the AISC 16 LRFD design standard. When entering your loads for either bolt groups or weld groups, you're going to enter your factored reactions on your bolt or weld group here, considering the design code that you entered. So since I selected an LRFD design standard, I need to make sure I enter factored load combinations here that reflect that code. I'm going to enter in one set of reactions. So I'm going to give a description of one, and then I'm going to enter in my forces. I'm going to say my PUY is 40 kips for this weld group. And then I'm going to enter a moment MUZ of negative 50 foot kips. Now if I'd like some additional information about the nomenclature or the sign convention that we use in RAM Connection Standalone for weld groups, you can see that the help window in the bottom right hand corner of your screen will display a lot of useful information on that. Now if you don't see this help window, you can go up to your ribbon toolbar and click on your help icon to ensure that this is displayed. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click OK to enter in our loads. Now I don't need to enter my design code information that was taken from my design code general criteria from my main application, but I am going to enter my analysis method. And here you see I have two different options. I have the elastic method and the instantaneous center method. The elastic method uses basic mechanics and superposition to estimate the shear stress in each weld. The load is considered at the center of gravity of the weld group, and a moment is added to account for the eccentricity. The stresses for each case are then determined and vectorally added together. You could also go with the instantaneous center method, which considers that the translational and rotational events occur simultaneously about an instantaneous center of rotation that is located near a line that is perpendicular to the applied force and passes near the original center of gravity of a weld group. The method also accounts for the ductility of the weld group and the potential for load redistribution. For this exercise, I'm going to select the instantaneous center option. Once you enter your general information, you're ready to move on to your weld group criteria. So I'm going to enter my welding electrodes first. I'm going to select the United States database and I'm going to select the E70 XX electrodes and I'm going to enter a fillet weld size. For this exercise, I'm going to enter four, which would actually mean four sixteenths. I can see that nomenclature in the title here. After that, you're going to enter your fillet weld group type and you can see I have all these different options available here. I'm going to enter a channel with unequal flanges. You can see it's going to be updated here. And then I'm going to enter the length of each flange. So let's go with a depth of 12 inches. I'm going to enter a base of 
10 inches and an A dimension of 10 inches. Again, for some additional information regarding the different types of welds, we do have that available in the help window. Now, once you've entered all of your weld group parameters and your loading information, you're ready to review the results. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look in my toolbar and I'm going to see my interaction ratio has been indicated. Here you can see I have a passing weld group connection design and I have an interaction ratio of 0.53. It is indicated in green, which means I passed all code checks and have not produced any warnings. If you want some additional information regarding the capacity of your weld group, you can go to your steel connection report, which is available through this results icon. Here I can review all the design checks that were performed. I could see the capacity of my particular weld group versus the demand that considers the loading that I entered. And of course, it's resulting interaction ratio. This report may look slightly different depending upon which weld group type you selected. Now, if I'd like some additional information regarding the formulas or calculations that were performed, I can click on the View Formulas icon. This will indicate all the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Now, at this point, I finished looking at my connection report. Now, before I close out of the connection pad, I do have some additional options available to me. So I could use this workflow to optimize the weld group. What the optimize icon will do for your weld group that you're designing is it'll go ahead and optimize your weld size. So if I went here and clicked on the optimize icon, you're gonna see it can update the weld size, which would give you a higher interaction ratio, slightly more efficient than what I entered before. Now, if I like this new weld size, I can go ahead and click the save icon and it will save it as a 3 16 inch weld instead of a quarter inch weld. Lastly, I can also take a look at the DXF plan, and here I can see the DXF that would be created for this type of detailing. And here I can see my 3 16 inch fillet weld. Now again, if I like this weld group, I can go ahead and click the save icon, and then I can exit out of the connection pad. You can see the RAM connection standalone has successfully created my weld group. I'm going to go ahead and click close and you can see your weld group being added to the joint selection area. So the big advantage of being able to define a bolt group or a weld group through the tools area of RAM Connection Standalone is that it won't be necessary to create a new joint, generate load combinations and so forth to get to the results of what's the capacity of either this bolt group or this weld group. You can just enter your connection pieces and come up with some results. At this point, this concludes our process for creating a weld group within RAM Connections Standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.